So what is with all the Long Men Pai? All the Dragon Gate lineages. There's a lot of Dragon Gate lineages. Am I right? Um, you know, if you've ever been to China or practice in China, or even here in the West, you know, there, there's so many um, Taoist teachers, Taoist teachers of energy arts, who identify as being Long Men Pai, and that's their lineage. Um, so why is that? And my teacher, Wang Liping, is a transmitter of the Long Men Pai. So how does he fit into a whole mess? <laughs> is he the top dog? Um, how does he fit, right? And so what I want to do in this talk is, 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 is look, at, look, at, look at what's going on here. Uh, and so let's start with history. Our story starts seven, eight hundred years ago in the Yuan Dynasty, right after the Song Dynasty, with a fellow named Qiu Chuji and another guy named Genghis Khan. Qiu Chuji is the founder of the Long Men Pai. That's, it's, that's his lineage that he set up. He came up with the name and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he is one of the seven Taoist masters, um, one of the no seven Taoist northern masters, right? And uh, so he went, um, it, oh, it, Genghis Khan, uh, he's up in Mongolia, right? And he decided he wanted to take China along with I think, most of the rest of the world. He's like, yeah, China, I'll take that, it's mine. And uh, so then Chou Chuji decided to go and, and meet Genghis Khan and have a chat with him. He's like, hey, what's up, you know? <laughs> and Genghis Khan went, yeah, I like you. You're a good guy. I like your stuff. Okay, I'm going to give you Taoism. <laughs> and so he made Chou Chuji the official uh, um, authority on all the Taoist lineages and traditions in China. And so you have these many, many, many different lineages and traditions, and they kind of all come together with Qiu Chu Ji at the White Cloud Temple. Now the crazy thing is, fast forward a few hundred years to 1644 in the beginning of the Qing Dynasty, it happens again. Uh, you know, like all over again, right? History repeats itself um, with a fellow named uh, Wang Changyue. Now Wang Changyue. Um, he was at the White Cloud Temple in, in Beijing when the Manchurians came in. So the Manchurians, a whole other group of horse-riding barbarians from the far north. They're from the far east, you know, northeast, uh, Mongolians northwest. And they came in and they basically did the same thing. It's like, hey, China, cool. Yeah, we'll take it. It's ours. Thanks. Um, and to, uh, to kind of cement their authority on the country, uh, they had to control the various parts of, of Chinese society, right? And that included the various spiritual traditions. And so they set up four departments, one, for, one to, um, to manage these uh, spiritual traditions, right? So you had, had the, the Confucians, the Taoists, the Buddhists, and the Tibetan Buddhists, all four of these, um, you yeah, these four departments. And so they went to Wang Changyue and said, okay, you, are now the Taoist guy. You're, you're the authority on Taoism in China. <laughs> and he's like, uh, okay. <laughs> and um, so, now why is that important? What does that mean? Sure, the emperor says Wang Changyue is now the authority on Taoism, but you got, I mean, China's a big place. There's a saying in Chinese, uh, 天高皇帝远. You know, this means the, the, the sky is high and the emperor is far away. If you have a Taoist in Sichuan province or, or some small village somewhere, some small village shrine, you know, what's that got to do with him? And how is that going to affect him? Well, to understand that, um, we want to look at two forces within, um, two historical forces within uh, uh, the Chinese spiritual traditions, and that is uh, Zheng Jiao and Xie Jiao. So Zheng Jiao is, um, so Jiao means teachings. So you had the, you had the orthodox uh, teachings, and the orthodox, te orthodox isn't maybe the best word for it, but it's the, the teachings that are thought of as proper and upright, and um, they are, um, you know, they're the, they're, <laughs> I'm looking for the word. They're not 
heterodox, which is 邪教，邪 is kind of crooked, right? So Zheng is your your upright, Xie is your little you know your little shifty, your little crooked, and 邪教 basically what we here in the West would define as cults, right? The difference between say an organized religion like the Roman Catholic Church,、uh, and and、uh, you know.、Uh, A local cult that's you know drinking Kool Aid and and whatnot.、Um, so, if you are in this world of spiritual traditions in China in the Qing Dynasty, you do not want to get branded as crooked as 邪教 You definitely want to be show that you are、um, you are the you are an upright member of a proper temple or a lineage. Um, you know, what, however that looks, because it can look many different ways.、Uh, you want to be Zheng, and to do that in the Qing Dynasty, that meant you, the easiest way to do that was to go to Beijing, meet Wang Changyue, and get an ordination with him at the White Cloud Temple. Right. So if you're a、uh, a Taoist and who knows wherever you know, doing your own thing, you have you know, I mean, it's、like、a roadside temple or Or、um, you're a domestic、uh, Taoist that works for whatever it is, whatever that looks like, right?、Um, then you want to go to Beijing and get that ordination. You want to get that certificate. You want to go there, spend a year or two, or however long it took. I, for, I forget my history,、uh, and then come back to where、uh, to your to where you originally were from. And you want to bring that certificate with you, right? So it's like a certificate. You can put it on, put it on the wall, <laughs> and you know, show everyone else. So when the local official comes by, and he starts giving you trouble for you know, if there's any politics or whatever going on, you can just point at your certificate and say, "Hey, I'm Long Min Pai. I'm legit. My temple is 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 upright, right?" Um, you know, uh. And I think there's always a little kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge, right? Because with the other people who who, who knew you,、uh, because you have your you have your original lineage, right?、And、you have your original practices.、Um, you know,、oh、yeah, I'm Longwen Pai. You know, kind of, yeah, okay.、Uh, but you kind of just probably just kept on doing what it was that you originally、um, did. And then when the officials kind of Come knocking, you know. You show them a certificate, or maybe do a, you know, some sort of ritual you learned from Wang Changyue and, and at the White Cloud.、Um, so basically, again, all the Taoists in China became Longmen Pai. Not all of them, but a, a vast amount of them, right?、Um, now, fast forward 350 years, like hundreds of years,、um, it gets really messy. All those people that want, went to Wang Changyue and got that lineage, they carry on their lineage within, and, and most of them probably kept on calling themselves, identifying as Longmen Pai. So when they took new disciples, and and that keeps getting spread down through history, right?、Uh, you have a lot of Longmen Pai, and that's basically why today we still have a lot of Longmen Pai, and. Um, um, So which one's legit? Which one's the original? Which one? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think my teacher knows, right?、Um, there's a lot of really incredible practitioners out there. There's a lot of very,、uh, um, um, very good lineages of Longmen Pai that have really incredibly rich、uh, systems of practice that they are passing on. You know, right off the top of my head, I know I have three good friends from. Three different Lumen Pai,、um, and they do very different things,、um, and they're all really neat. Like one of them is a, is a ritual specialist, so they're more involved. It's a temple lineage,、um, doing、uh, ceremony, ceremonies, ritual stuff, which is great stuff.、Um, you know, they have meditation. They have they have a lot of pretty deep stuff there as well. And there's another one I know who does more、um, talismans and and、um, writing the Fu right. And doing Suan Ming stuff, more、uh, fortune telling, that sort of thing. More of a domestic Taoist, living from home but working、um, within the community.、Uh, and then there's my teacher, you know,、uh, Wang Li Ping. And my first Taoist before Wang Li Ping in the in the nineties, he was a guy from Guangzhou,、uh, 
uh, he, he entered the temple, entered a temple, left his family, Chu Jia left his family when he was, uh, you know, like 11 or 12 years old, entered a temple in, in Guangzhou and became Long Lun Pai. Uh, there's a lot of Long Lun Pai. Now, one of the, now, let's take a look at my teacher. So Wang Liping is um, the transmitter of a Long Lun Pai. He, um, he was chosen by uh, three teachers of that lineage um, to pass on that lineage. And his position is that he, our, intra our so my teacher and myself, our lineage of Lung Min Pai is just one small branch within the vast Lung Min Pai network. That's it. He's not, he's not the head of all Long Min Pai in China. There's, uh, there's, there's way too many, right? Uh, he, just ha he has responsibility for his lineage, uh, and that's what he focuses on. He, he kind of just ignores <laughs> everything else, right? Uh, he just has his, the responsibility, the, the burden that's been put on him to make sure that his lineage gets passed on, and that's what he does. Um, and there's a lot of lineages. Um, and I think lineages are really important to understand traditional Chinese stuff. Is there's a, there's a distinction that I like to make between lineage and institution. You could say lineage is a kind of institution, but what I mean is sort of institution in the Western sense, where you have um, um, you have an, um, committees that dis run uh, the church or the temple or whatnot, right? And uh, in the old days. You know, you were your uh, your shifu's tudi. You know, you were the, you were a disciple of your of your of your shifu, your your teacher, your master, and your shuye, the, the his teacher and his master. Right? There's this line of of um, that line that comes down to us of the accumulated wisdom and knowledge of the lineage, and it's a very powerful thing. Especially when you're dealing with something like internal alchemy. Internal alchemy it, it can be really dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, right? And so you want to have uh, experience backing you up, right? And uh, and so that's what a lineage is, right? It's a little different than say here uh, in the West, where we if if we have a career, then we um, probably our number one ident identifier is either where we went to school or what company we work for, right? So are you, did you go to Harvard Law School or did you go to a community college um, night school, you know, to practice law? And of course, it's, you know, of course, what you bring to the party matters, right? So it's not just that lineage. That's not enough. But, or if we're talking about the West here, that school is not enough, right? Uh, you also got to bring something. Um, but that's what identifies and that's what shapes what... Uh, here in the West, what school you went to identifies who you are, what you know, your skill set, how you approach um, your field. Uh, in China, you don't have that. Schools never, I mean, often the, you hear the word school get, you know, the, the complete reality school or whatnot, but it doesn't really work like that. There's not, it's, 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 it's very much a uh, personal relationship with your master your teacher, right? Um, even if you go to a temple, uh, traditionally in China, you, become, you, become a, a, you join a temple, you leave your family, you're in a temple, you don't necessarily just get a lineage and, and you had to, within that temple, um, so you have a lineage of the temple, but you'd have to have a personal shifu and you'd it'd be your responsibility to develop that relationship, right? Um, to learn the, the good stuff. Um, and so, and even in the old days, uh, Wang Liping was saying that when, when you meet somebody, um, you're a Taoist, you meet someone else, the first way, the, fir the way that you introduce yourself, you introduce your, yourself and your, your, your Shifu and then your Shurya. So the three generations. And that identifies you and positions you in a complex a mosaic of social interactions, which is so important to uh, Chinese daily life. That's where you're situated, right? 
it's not, uh, it's not institutional in that way. Now that has changed in the last hundred years, right? So as China has westernized, they've adopted uh, Western ways of you know ruling by committee <laughs> and and whatnot. Um, with you know you have the the, the Chinese Taoist Association um, and uh, and they're doing you know they're doing wonderful stuff. Um, but it's just it's it's a more modern Westernized way of of, of going about uh, organizing this stuff, right? Um, yeah, so, and that brings us to another point is, so, question is, um, Long Lin Pai. Uh, is, is, is there one Long Lin Pai practice or a system of practice where you can say, oh, that's, this is a Long Lin Pai technique or this isn't? I don't think so. I think each Long Lin Pai is going to have their own system of practice. I think Long Lin Pai is often um, associated with internal alchemy. And so often they will have internal alchemy in it, but... I mean, I remember Wang Liping saying very clearly, he's like, it's, it's kind of, it doesn't, it, it actually, it's a, it's a misconception. He's like, the Zheng Yi guys, they have lots of good internal alchemy. It's just kind of this social kind of convention that's built up over time that the Long Lin Pai have the best internal alchemy. Uh, it's not, not, it's, at least Wang Liping doesn't think so. You know, it really depends on each individual and their teachers and as to what they have. Right? These labels, you know, they, they, kinda, they can be misleading in that way. So there is no sort of essential Long Lin Pai practice. There is no, um, from my understanding, right? There's a lot of different Long Lin Pai. And they're all quite different. Um, some of them, are, there's overlap, of course, but there's, there's a lot of differences as well. And a lot of them are amazing. There's some really good teachers out there that are not well known, right? My teacher, Wang Li Ping, and myself, have, have, have our path has been fairly public. Um, and that, there's reasons for that, but there's other, there are a lot of other teachers who really keep under the, the, the radar and they have, they have amazing stuff. I think the main thing, you know, of whether lineage matters or not, I think the main thing for me is, especially if you're doing something like internal alchemy, as long as your lineage or who you're learning from, um, has a fairly complete, I'm not going to say system, but knowledge and understanding of the practices and how they all fit together. And often that comes from the lineage, established lineages who, where they have generations to refine and, and figure out what works, what doesn't work. Oh, don't do that. Your head will blow up. <laughs> you know? uh, as a, and, and I think that's a good thing, right? And, and I think there are teachers that kind of cobble stuff together from here or there and, and might not have a lineage that you might want to be a little more careful with. But that being said, you know, you know, maybe there's some really brilliant people out there, more brilliant than me, um, who just have a, an instinctual understanding of how these arts work, right? And maybe they don't have a lineage and they're an amazing teacher, who knows, right? Um, I, I, think, I think at the end of the day, what I want to leave you with is one, uh, just how big China is geographically, population-wise, and history and every 10, I mean, think about how fast things change every 10 years now. The same is true back then, right? There's this idea that history kind of just doesn't, modern, pre-modern history, it's all kind of the same, right? But no, there's, when you drill down into each century and then into each decade, there's change going on all the time, right? Uh, and so it's, what I mean is complex. There's a lot going on. And two, um, there's a lot of amazing teachers out there, and even just identify with being Longman Pai, and we're, we're different from each other, but there's there's some really good teachers out there, and uh, I just think they're amazing, um, and uh, yeah, so there you go, that that's it, that's the mess of Longman Pai. I, I hope it kind of brings some light to the to the subject. Um, I would also be interested to hear about um, other people's uh, Long Lin Pai and what they practice and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, you're welcome to leave comments and, and share your thoughts. Anyways, um, love you guys and uh, I'll, I'll see you next time.